guys, welcome back. This is a uh, really quick video on the Garmin 601 Fortrex. Um, I've had this unit now for um, quite a few months now, really. I think since about um, September last year. So um, it's working out really good. It is a very, very powerful navigation tool. It is a military grade uh, device. Um, I've got it featured here on uh, an accessory here, which is the uh, tan coloured um, NATO band really just goes through the back on the loops and uh, you can see there 601 mil standard uh, 810G tested thermal shock and water it's got a dummy cord location there and this actually activates and opens up the battery compartment so I'll show you that really quickly uh, if the unit beeps it just means because we're inside it uh, will might struggle for a little bit of GPS there, but we have got some satellite fix there. I am running this unit on some rechargeable batteries. Uh, they are any loops. Uh, the batteries don't last quite as long in rechargeable mode, but for me, because I use it so much, um, that, uh, let's clear the track log. That was my last hike that I did around my local area. So you can see there it's searching uh, for a signal. So let's uh, look around the outside of it very quickly. I'm gonna try and keep this video nice and concise for you. Not very many videos on this device on the YouTube. So uh, you can see there the power, you have to press that, long press that, it's a lower button than all the rest. Nice and easy soft buttons, easy to uh, access with gloves on. Some nice sort of chamfering around the edges. Nice design there. It's actually relatively lightweight. Most of this unit's weight is due to the batteries. I'm sure, um, I haven't checked, but if you did use a lithium kind of battery, they are actually lighter. These are much more robust uh, and more solid than the previous generation. They do screw in there, so you've got a captive nut there. That is a bar that screws into that. No need to take this off, because uh, the strap is, um, as you can see there, the military kind. I actually think this is a lot better than the standard strap it comes with, which is like a Velcro, anti-clockwise, I suppose that would be a quarter turn. Battery compartment, you've got um, some foam there just for protection. You've got a rubber gasket seal around the edge. This hinge here opens completely flat. It also tells you when you take the batteries out of the orientation, and you've got the lock-in tab there and your micro USB to sync the device to your computer if you so wish. You don't have to, but if you want to upload anything with relatively ease, uh, you can do that. So, um, I've got a glass screen protector on here. Just about see it there. Um, I find it's better, it's much more clear uh, for my purpose. <clears throat> so. Um, you were getting a little bit of GPS drift here because we haven't got a full lock uh, because we're inside in a building. So that's one of the reasons there. Uh, let's see here. If you press uh, the mark button, you get a number of options. You can clear that. That little line is actually what they call breadcrumbing, which is it tracking what we're doing. You can measure distances. You can see all the options there. Press the go to page, it comes out of that. This affects your zoom level. You see that there? 0.2 miles and if you have any waypoints saved I can't remember if I have yes I have so this is uh, an area where I hunt uh, and the other one uh, let's have a look yeah so I've got this on fixed north I actually found it's actually nicer to navigate with the north fixed you can change it you can make it so that the whole map rotates around but I actually find the arrows far better when you're trying to follow your own track back um, that goes to five miles, keep going. Got a bug out location. Uh, work is um, about 30 miles from where we are now, but as you know, as the crow flies, it's actually a bit closer. Go even further out, uh, out to 800 miles. So you can navigate vast amounts of area uh, very easily for any operation or any hiking outdoors kind of stuff you need to do. This is a big unit. Uh, the negative point that I've found with this is if you're wearing it under clothing, it's chunky. Uh, I've got a Seiko SKX on, a dive watch, pretty chunky dive watch. Uh, you know, it's an ISO rated diver, so um, they would call this probably some sort of industry standard really of dive watches, very old school. 
very cool automatic watch love it but look look at the size comparison the sort of and this is a i think this is a 40 or a 42 millimeter case so this is a big watch in terms of its length so you end up having to wear it slightly further up your arm just so you can have the wrist articulation there but it's no biggie you can have it on the outside you could attach it to your pack kind of pop it through here with some zip ties or dummy cord it put it in your pocket it doesn't really matter it's pretty pretty small really it's like the size of a matchbox really it's relatively light uh, okay so well so if we press this button it comes up with some preset menus you can change everything you see on this watch except for uh, this area here so you can pick your bearing <clears throat> and what I like about that is when I do have waypoints saved uh, it will tell you how far you're off the bearing. You can t it will tell me you can, like I said, you can pick. So you can calibrate the compass, change the fields. You use that, click on it. You can, you know, you can change. Change it to everything you want. It's mad. Um, so I find this is useful because um, you, you can see the difference and you can be more accurate. Or you also get a slight indication here about, you know, where you're heading to. Um, if I wanted to do something quite interesting, if I press and hold this, we can actually go very quickly to a waypoint. So let's select that. So it tells us <clears throat> that that way, where we need to go is this way. And obviously if you turn the unit, do you see what I mean there? This makes it a little bit clearer. I know the arrow helps you, but sometimes, you know, if you do, if you are going on a trail that's slightly off course, your bearing's 265 there, but you're, you know, you're heading in, I don't know, say say there, about 140. Four, uh, you know roundabout way you're gonna be, you know, when you go off course, as you can imagine, um, <clears throat> you're gonna be walking further. You've got your elevation here in meters. It does work off the GPS. That is incorrect from where we are. We're around 88 meters. It's fine when you start, uh, when you go outside, you get a stronger fix. You can also calibrate this, so, um, and every time you press the enter button, you have different options um, and press the go to page to go back. So I'll press this again. Uh, some other screens here, you can change every one of these settings. <clears throat> and again, you can reset it. Pressing the go to page goes back. You've got, uh, this is Ordnance Survey for British, because you can tell that I'm British. I've uh, got my GPS there. Uh, the barometer, I found this actually to be really accurate. <clears throat> and this is live, as we are now, based on the internal pressure sensor in here. It doesn't receive any data from an external source like your phone. You can connect it, but um, it's not needed really. So you can track this over time. It's a shame it hasn't got any sort of tracking over time feature because then you'll be able to see the trends in the uh, atmospheric pressure, which might lead you to, depending on how fast the drop is or how fast the rise is might lead you to a coming to the conclusion that there may or may not be a storm coming in so I wish it had a graph that'd be really cool um, I wish it also had alarms based on barometer which it does not you can that'd be cool to preset it to something like I don't know 10 10 millibars and you'll know it's um, gonna rain or something like that but of course uh, depending on what you do, it doesn't really matter if it rains because you can just tell because you'll get wet. So uh, all puns aside, so let's go on to the next screen. Uh, this is sort of your main options. You can enter waypoints there. You can also press and hold the mark button. It gives you your grids there. Uh, depending on what setting you've got, it'll give you um, your, um, I suppose, your uh, GPS coordinates or whatever you've got it set to. So many options, you can press enter, you can change the icon. You can also change the name, <clears throat> give it something meaningful. So that's cool. Um, it does seem to uh, add waypoints uh, and sort of no, uh, number them in sort of numerical order. So um, I don't often use the waypoint feature uh, or not so much. So I actually haven't put that many in. So apparently I've only put 24 in. Um, but I have reset the device, so I don't know whether or not it has a memory. Pressing uh, the go to page comes out of that. Tracks, if you have any uh, saved, you can view them. Let's have a look if I've got any saved. I have. Um, again, you can go along. It tells you what sort of time. 
So when was that? 21st of Feb. And oh, it goes back to today. It, it just It's just a useful feature and you can do track back and you can pick at a point in time or where you see roughly along your trail, depending on how long it is. And then again, you can get you back, you can save them. So if you did do a climb up a, uh, a particular point that you were really happy with, you can save it and you go the same way the next time. So it's a really good feature. It tells you how much memory you've got up there in the top right hand corner. And of course you can delete them, pressing the go to page goes backwards. You can create routes to do that. You can use the waypoints and let's see if I've got any. I have, go into that. <clears throat> now I know for a fact this is an older route that I had set, which is interesting because I've actually deleted these waypoints and this is um, a loop that I do uh, with a weighted pack. So I don't know if, um, if it would work. And of course you have to pick where you are and where you start to and go back to. So that's a cool feature. <clears throat> you can delete them and create them. And of course when you upload things from the, your computer, that will also um, <clears throat> give you uh, options for that. Uh, set up, you can connect it to your phone, you can connect it to other sort of Bluetooth devices. You've got your sun and moon phase. There you are. And you can also forward project this. So if you're going hunting or you're doing an operation, um, police, military, whatever, you can have a look at your moon phase. So you need to, of course, <coughs> excuse me, adapt your camouflage to the amount of light or just need to be more careful of your light silhouetting on the, in an area. Uh, we've got our GPS, tells you how many fixes you have. So we've got a, quite a good fix, but of course where some of those, these are satellite numbers, uh, I can't remember what we've got this set to, I think it might be GPS and uh, GLONASS, which is a Russian uh, satellite network. If you press, I think that one again, gives you where they are in the hemisphere. North, south, east, west, that's a really cool feature. Come out of that. Um, if you're doing a halo or hey ho jump, if you're in the military, you've got your options, you can do static line as well. You can set up your altitude and your you know jump destination, etc. like that. You can set up loads of cool stuff. So I mean, let's look at hey ho. Impact point, drop. All that good stuff. Wind, etc. etc. Tells you where you're going. It's really cool. Really, really, really cool. I won't be using that unless I do a parachute jump. So, uh, what else? I'm conscious that we're talking for a little while. The setup. Normal stuff, guys. Really normal stuff. You can choose to have a timer that's displayed. I don't bother. Um, it could be useful for you if you wanted to do some traditional navigation and set it for every 10 minutes to remind you to check which way you're going. Your display options, the display is very good. It's got a night vision mode, so basically to access that, access the light in general, if I press this, see the light there? It's really strong. That is on low power. If you go into night vision mode and have this on, you... so when you're looking at night vision mode, um, <clears throat> So you press the power button once, have a very strong light there. It's really bright in here, I've got the sunlight coming this way, not ideal. But that's actually on low power. So whenever you press a function button, that will come up. Now, if you're in night mode, it may or may not pick up on the camera. I press and hold the power button. Night vision mode, watch mode, which is literally as it says, and power off. So if you enable night vision mode, you may be able to see that. I can't see it. All right, let's try and get it to, nope, can't see it. It's so dim that it's really not gonna blow out your night vision, your nods for the military guys. So I'll turn it off, it's really not required unless you're doing something tactical. Um, so yeah, you can choose how long the light's on for, really cool. God knows why you'd want it on to stay on, etc. but maybe you would. Four seconds is plenty. Contrast is really good. Oh, there you go, backlight is on low. I'm gonna be honest with you, you don't even need it anymore. Any higher than low 
you know, it's like a Christmas tree when it goes off. So those are some of the basic display features units. You can change everything. So you've got this that comes up. Uh, that's pretty much it because it locks out the features when you pick uh, what features there. Let's come out with that. My bad. Right. So you can pick all kinds of stuff. Let's just get it to go through. Just, you know, MGRS. Everything, guys. All your military guys will appreciate this. UTM, UPS, everything. And just bog standard um, GPS there as well. But the British for me is great because it tells me what, what um, you know, if I use my ordnance survey, it helps me quite a lot. Heading, um, compass, you can turn off the compass. If you turn the compass off, uh, it actually saves the battery. But the battery life on this is very good. So, um, you know, I find it um, no issue at all. You can see how nice. This is beautifully made. It's solid, beautiful made. Uh, compass is automatic as well. You can also change such things. System, this is where you've got your, ah, so we're on GLONASS. This is an American system for weather stations. They also give off a GPS uh, location and that can also help you. We've got this annoying beep on. We've got 9MH selected because we're using the uh, any loop rechargeables, you know, very environmentally friendly. I like them. Uh, they are, have got, though, just talking about these, the pro version, which I understand are better. So we'll get some of those. Uh, you can see that these are 750 milliamp 1.2 volts, but it works perfectly fine and you get good life out of them. Not as good as alkaline batteries. Um, you can put your details in there. Tracks, this is where you can see. You can pick the resolution. I've been using medium. You can go to like a silly level or a very low level. Yeah. Um, it, you can pick the intervals where you're doing it over distance or time or automatically. I just leave it in automatic. You can actually pick where they record because as soon as you turn this device on, it's recording so long as it's got a GPS fix. If it loses GPS, it will tell you. Uh, it uses the compass and um, the gyro actually in here as well to fill the blanks in as well. So it's really cool. That just tells you to when the memory is actually full, which I've never had happen yet. Um, when the memory is full, then it just um, rewrites over it. Roots. Just, uh, yeah. Map, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, so I've got it on north up, you can auto zoom, all that good stuff. It's so easy. Your altimeter or calibration, etc. Tells you some more stuff. Uh, literally, with the phone, you just turn that on, you put the Jeep, uh, the, the Bluetooth on your phone, and it does the rest. And it does connect to the Garmin system, uh, I think it's called Connect IQ, but. Now, one thing that I was a little bit grumpy about, when I do a hike, I would quite like the data from this to go onto my uh, mobile device. So I've got an Apple device, just to keep track of, you know, when I went on these and what speed, what routes, etc. But it doesn't want to do it. Now, I, the only reason why I can see why it won't do it is because this is a, is a military hardcore navigation device. It's not the end of the world. I mean, you can tell your distance, time, speed, all that good stuff. And you can remember it, which is what I do. But um, if you want that feature to connect to the phone and remember it, I don't think it's gonna work for you. Uh, we spoke about everything else. Press the go to page. And guys, that's pretty much it really. So um, it's a really nice unit. It's really nicely made. Uh, beautifully made actually, it's very solid. That's pretty much it guys for this unit. I'm really pleased with it. Uh, I do like this strap. Uh, they are a little bit of a premium price. I believe these are 24 millimeters. So if you, this is a 24 mil strap, fits perfectly. <clears throat> uh, this is a 22, does fit, does work, no problem. So you could use military bands if you want. You could use Molly, Molly straps there, no problem. Zip ties, whatever you want. It will work, no problems. Waterproof, 
all that good stuff there. Um, there's a bit of a close up. It really is a very nice premium product. It really is. There's, no, there's nothing, no two ways about it. Obviously, you can't put a huge amount of load on these, so you know you have to be careful. Um, but you no, know, it's like any watch, really. It's only as strong as the weakest point, so I suppose that there with this this uh, fiber resin uh, plastic would be your weakest point. Now, one something else that I want to show you guys. This is a, a case made by a company called Raptor Tactical. So um, you can see there, it's got more of the conventional strap there. It goes through the loop there, but it protects the face with this really nice sort of nylon material. However, let's put it in there and I'll show you what I mean when I do that. So uh, buttons down. I'll try and do this on camera. So I pop it in there like that, make sure it's nice and snug. Close that there. Nice. Snug as a bug in a rug, as they say. Make sure that's nice and flat. Really nice. Wrapped tactical, good, good work guys. I mean, <clears throat> if you're banging through woods or on ops, doing stuff. Uh, I occasionally have to do stuff in my law enforcement job. Um, so this is perfect. Open area ground search, overground searches. What a better way to record where you've been other than saying I've searched that area, sergeant, etc, etc. You can say oh, I've done this. So, wrong way Alex. <laughs> so, open that up. Now, before, you can see some of the um, stitching points. So this had a protective plastic film over the top. Now, I've got a glass screen protector, and even before, the plastic film used to stick to the screen. You know, there was just some slight amount of sort of tack there. So I took it off. It's not only softer, but it's more legible to read. And it's overkill, really, because this... As you can hear, it is very robust and it will protect it very nicely from, you know, scratching. So anyway, this is really comfortable. This is also really comfortable. The strap that they come with is not so great, but it's not the end of the world. But this is this is this is stunning. Put this on my rucksack. Uh, it's great, no problems. So anyway, doesn't affect. Look at that. Perfect. The only one that's slightly more difficult is the power button, but the battery life on these are great. I'm not going to bother with you with the specs because you can just look it up on the Garmin website. Loads of information there, including the user's guide. So you don't even need to buy it. You can check all it on their website. So, um, <clears throat> and yeah, it's a really cool unit. Um, maybe not for you if you are um, a casual hiker, probably a bit extreme. But if you do anything tactical, um, if you play Milsim for Airsoft or other kind of stuff, this is a very cool uh, gadget to have to do stuff. You could set up you know, your RV points, you can make waypoints, you get to a location and you want to hide some gear, like a bug out scenario or uh, a weapons cache in Airsoft. You go, oh my god, I need to do that, just press and hold. Make sure you've got GPS fixed, save it, give it a name, bam, done. Walk away, hide it, you can come back to it, no problems. Super easy, that easy. You think, oh shit, I need to go back to my location. I can't remember what it was called, but I know roughly that I've put it, etc., etc. Press and hold, bam. Bam, bam. Tells you which way you need to go, etc., etc. You can match those up. Good to go. That easy, guys. So anyway, thanks for joining in. Um, really liking the unit. Super useful. It's just an, it's just an excellent thing. Uh, you can stop navigating there. Take care, guys.